Hi. Um, the next drink we're going to do tonight is the uh, second of the bottled uh, drinks that we've got here. So what we're going to need for this is our bottle number three and four. And uh, so this drink is called a sugar plum fairy. Um, it has fairies tears in it and uh, no fairies were harmed in getting these tears. But as you can see, you've got this lovely green liquid in here. Uh, in your little pipette. So what I'll need you to do is just snip off the end of your pipette uh, and that will be for your garnish later. So that's right at the end of the drink we need that one, but just have it ready to go uh, there as well. The other thing we need in this drink is a martini glass. Um, the first thing we're going to do is just chill that martini glass. And so I'm just going to pop in a bit of ice in there and add in a little drop of soda water just so that the glass chills we'll discard this all uh, before we put the drink in so it's just to chill your glass down and get a really nice crisp and cold um, so with this drink we've got uh, your bottle one uh, sorry bottle three and bottle four bottle three has in it a lovely blend of a cranberry infused uh, beef eater gin and so uh, Beef Eater is one of those iconic brands and it's a little bit maligned. It is every bartender's kind of go-to product. It is so good. Uh, just because it's affordable does not make this a bad brand. It is absolute belter. It is the Daily Thompson or Jessica Innes of the uh, uh, gym world. And the reason we I say that is it does everything brilliantly. It's got a big juniper hip, which is what you really want from any good London dry gin. Um, it basically makes an amazing Negroni. It makes amazing gin and tonics, amazing martinis. Um, there's not a thing. This this is kind of my uh, good all around all rounder, and I always kind of say it's one of my uh, desert desert island bottles. That if I had to go to a desert island, and I could only take certain bottles with me. If I could only take one bottle of gin, I would always, always take Beef Eater just because it's just so good and it's won more awards than any other gin uh, on the planet and it's it's an absolute rock star of the bartending world and as bartenders we love this product just because it's so simple and it's so accessible as well and uh, just because something doesn't cost very much doesn't make it bad. Um, this is one of those products where it is a world beater and it's... It's just super affordable. So if you're buying a bottle, just get a bottle that always keep it as your backup. If you don't, if you want to get some more expensive exclusive gins and local gins, we love those as well. But as a good all-rounder for everything at every occasion, you can't go wrong with beef eater. So what we've done with that is we've taken dried cranberries, we macerated them in a big bag, we put them into big, big bags, we then put them into a water bath and we steep them and we sous vide them. Uh, for a long time just to extract all the flavour out whilst not diluting the liquid. And so, uh, hence the reason we use the dried cranberries as well. So the dried cranberries are picked when they're in their perfect season and then just they've extracted the moisture out but none of the flavour and none of the goodness. So you can see there you get this lovely, lovely pink liquid in there. And so that is, uh, part, that is part of our first drink. Um, the next thing we've got in there is some plum and vanilla liqueur from Edinburgh Gin. And so what we'll need for this is a cocktail shaker. Now, if you haven't got a cocktail shaker, don't worry. You can use a Nutribullet, you can use a uh, bit of Tupperware, a jam jar, anything like that, and it works perfectly. Um, the way we're going to make this, I'm going to make this from scratch, but what you need to do is just pop in your bottles one and two into your cocktail shaker, and then I will catch up with you once you've done that shortly. So if you just empty that first, uh, bottle, sorry, bottles three and four into your cocktail shaker and you can do that. And so what we're going to do here is I'm going to make the drink from scratch for you and I'm just going to take in 30 ml of the cranberry infused gin and then I'm going to top that up with 20 ml of my Edinburgh Gin's uh, plum and vanilla liqueur. Now when we were trying to design this drink uh, the brief we gave ourselves was to try and put Christmas cake or Christmas pudding uh, into a glass. 
and so we needed cranberries, we needed plums, we needed vanilla, but we also wanted a little bit of cherry in there as well. And so uh, in there we've got our cranberry, we've got our plum vanilla, and then we've made this lovely uh, dark cherry syrup to go in there as well. And so in there, this is in your bottle number four, is some cherry syrup, but what we've also got in there is some fresh lemon juice as well. And so I'm just gonna put in 15 ml of the cherry syrup. Now the way we make this syrup is what we do is we take black cherries, fresh, and then we uh, cut them, take the stones out, and then we put them into sugar and we let them just steep in a sous vide water bath again uh, overnight. And we get this, extract all this flavor into the sugar again, and then we pasteurize it at the same time as we're heating it. Uh, so when we strain all the solids out, we've got this lovely pasteurized cherry syrup. Um, the next thing we do is we add in just 15 ml, uh, which I've already got there, of lemon juice. And so a really good thing to get is a, uh, we call them Mexican elbows, and it's basically a, a citrus press. Uh, don't recommend buying the little bottles of the tiny little bottles of lemon juice. It's quite too acidic. And... Uh, Fresh is always best, we always say. But yeah, we put that in there already for you. The only other ingredient that's in there now is this amazing product called Ms. Better's Bitters Miraculous Foma. So this drink we're making is basically a modern version of a sour. So if you think about uh, your whiskey sours, your gin sours, and all those kind of sour cocktails, um, one of the things they used to add to a whiskey sour was egg white. And so egg white obviously doesn't travel very well. And so what we've done is we found this amazing product a few years back and it's this absolutely nutty lady out in Canada. Uh, I've been really lucky in uh, lockdown to actually speak with her quite a few times and find out all about her amazing foma that she created and all her other bitters that she does as well. But she's like this little alchemist who makes these great wizardry concoctions. And she's zany, she's like very larger than life. She wears these kind of Elton John sunglasses and big loud colours and just absolutely adorable lady but she created this product which has kind of revolutionised our industry and as I said it's called Ms Better's Bitters Miraculous Foma and that's already in your little uh, bottle number three actually there's a little bit in there with the alcohol so all I'm going to do is take a third of the pipette I'm just going to pop that into my drink the only other thing I'm going to do and uh, this was a little tip uh, uh, from Pat who actually invented this is just add in uh, 15 to 20 ml of water and the reason I'm doing that is first of all it adds a little bit more volume which is what you would get if you had added a whole egg white into it um, but also what it does is it activates the foamer and it makes it foam really nicely and uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to dry shake this cocktail first what I mean by dry shaking is essentially what we're doing is we're shaking it without the ice. We're just gonna create a foam. We wanna create a lovely meringue foam for this drink. And so I'm gonna do that for about 15 seconds. And so when you shake your cocktail, always try and hold the cocktail shaker top and bottom and cradle it so you've got a nice firm thing so that the thing doesn't explode all over you. And then give it a really good throw. So you're just basically pushing backwards and forwards. It's the easiest way. And that way, when you're doing it, you're getting as much air, you're bouncing it off the front and top of the uh, cocktail shaker. So in there when I open it up now I've got this lovely mousse and foam. And so the next thing I'm going to do is just, I need to dilute and chill it. So I'm just going to add some ice to that now. I'm going to discard the ice and water from my glass. And as you'll see the glass is lovely and frosted now and ready for me to pour in the drink in a second. So all I'm going to do is just pop that on again get a nice seal and give it another shake. So now what we're doing is we're diluting and we're chilling uh, at the same time while still adding a bit, of, uh, a bit more air to the drink. So the last thing I want to do with this is just strain it. Now if you've got a fine strainer, if you can do it through that, it's even better. Uh, or if you've got a cocktail strainer, you don't want any ice in it but quite often doing it through a little fine mesh strain is quite good or a sieve and you can just pour it through and what it does it just takes out all the big bubbles when you're doing that 
So I'm just going to pour that in like that. And then I'm just going to let that settle for uh, about 15 to 20 seconds. And what I'm waiting to do is like it, you'll see it starting to separate out. And it's a bit like a pint of Guinness. And what we're waiting to do is wait for that foamy head to just sort of solidify, come together and get a little bit denser. And so the idea behind it is that uh, when we do that, when we do our little garnish on top, it will just make it stand a little bit more proud on it. And so the, the lovely thing with this drink and with all sours is that they date back hundreds of years. And so one of the great things we do at our bar when it's opened uh, in Exeter is it's based in this beautiful old customs house. And this custom house dates back to 1680. And 1680 was when uh, William of Orange basically came over and he became the King of England. And he, uh, he came over and he landed not far from here in Brixham, came in there. And the first customs house in the UK was founded in 1680 and that was in Exeter. And so this customs house was, uh, is still there. We've got a tiny little corner of it. Uh, in normal times that we can open. We've got uh, no windows, we've got one door, so it's very hard for us to open in a COVID safe environment. However, it's now the home of all of our uh, stir crazy boxes. So it's got, it's, it's got a purpose at the moment and we love it. And, uh, but one of the great things about it is that we went back and we looked at the history of drinks. And one of the very first cocktails was the sour cocktail and when we have a book which is this one here which is called uh, the Bon Vivant's uh, Companion or How to Mix Drinks by Jerry Thomas and as you can see mine's really well worn and I use it all the time and this is actually about the fifth coffee I've gone through but I always have loads of notes in on, uh, on those classic drinks and how we make them and in there there's four sours and uh, with those he creates these drinks and it, this was the very first cocktail book, and it was in 1862 this was first published. And so when you look at those drinks, they came on the back of big punch bowls, and punch bowls were everywhere. They were kind of uh, iconic from, I don't know, about the 16, 1700s, all the way through to the 1800s. So if you think about when Dr. Inks and the customs house there was founded, punch bowls really started around that time. and. What happened with punch bowls is they used to have five ingredients, and those five ingredients were the spirit, the citrus, the water, the sweetener, and the spice or tea as well. And so all of those five ingredients, which uh, is what punch was named after, because it was named after the Sanskrit word panka, which meant five. And so what we have uh, at that same time around the 1850s is you have things like the cholera epidemics and things like that, which was through... Uh, drinking water and things like that was spread and all of these kind of epidemics that were around at the time gave met stopped people drinking these big sharing cocktails quite so much and sharing drinks so they wanted an individual drink and they wanted it to be safe and so at the moment when we have uh, our bars and we do a lot of punch bowls at our bars we can't do those at the moment but this is like one of those individual punches um, and so uh, and that's what the sour was now what I'm going to do here quickly is I'm just so you can see now it's separated out and we've got a really good solid foam on top and that's ideal for me garnishing now so I've taken the nib of that off and I'm just going to pop little drops on top of that foam you'll find they sit like little candy drops on top of the uh, the foam there and the harder that foam is the better these will sit and your garnish will be that much better um, now if you've still got your pick from your candied ginger. What I want you to do is you can just drive those through. Now, when you do your little pattern on top, you can do a little ring like I've done there, or you can do uh, some little arrows in a row. So three little arrows in a row, and then you can drag through them and make a little Christmas tree as well. And I'm doing a little ring, fairy ring, and you'll see there that if you pop through it, and it's, it's hard to see from that angle, but I've got this lovely ring of green hearts on top of the drink and it's a, it's very pretty, very delicate uh, garnish to it. Um, and these sours, when we had them, they were, as I said, they were like the smaller versions. So you had the strong, you had the spirit, you had the citrus, the sour there, and you had the sweetener there, the sugar. And so all of those things combined, we've just layered it in a little bit more with those lovely vanillas and plum and 
uh, cranberries and put it all into a glass of delicious uh, Christmasiness. Um, so yeah, I hope you like that third trick. And uh, yeah, you'll get this lovely pop on the palate of the plum, vanilla, all of those flavors. It is Christmas pudding or Christmas cake in a glass.